sure that when we are deploying something, it's going to work and not just the code that you have done, like not every single component, but the actual, work, the actual flow that the user are going to feel at the end of the day. Uh, my name is Carlos Gonzalez. I'm the CTO at Gesser. And we do prediction markets and uh, user interface for Augur. So if you want to check it out, that's us. So what, what are we going to use today? So I made a simple app where you can buy a ticket for the fake DevCon. It's easy, you just click the button and you get it. You don't have, you don't have to wait or do anything like that. So it's just a simple JavaScript thing. There is. You just have to type an email. <coughs> blah, blah, blah. Actually, buy and you know, MetaMask, look up. Simple thing, simple stuff. Uh, if you want to check the code of any point, or your home, or whatever, it's quite easy code. I'm just going to explain it a little bit. Anyway, you have it here. You have the different branches for every different demo that we're going to talk today. So you can check it out there. So, probably most of you are developers or are working on a product. And many, many, many startups, when the Friday comes, are like this. Like, should I deploy? Should I not? This weekend is going to be tough if I deploy. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Should I deploy? Should I wait for Monday? And it's stressful. It's not, it's not just about the product itself. It's also about that you don't really know if it's going to work. You feel the pain. Right? You don't want to feel that. So this is where the tests come. Uh, and to do that, you have CIs and CDs, the two integration and deployment. Uh, because when the user starts to touch the computer, something explodes, and you don't want that. So CIs, what they do basically is just they get the test that you have programs, programmed, they will run the test, and then the continuous deployment will deploy it somewhere. That's easy. We are not going to talk today exactly about that, but the previous part about the, the test for that. So just a simple stuff, just to get the things on the ground. Unit testing, when you have to when you want to test every single <coughs> one of those components that you have done, with React would be uh, a normal component, but if you are working more like in the low level, solidity or whatever, that would be one component, one of those contracts. Integration is when you have different of those components of different parts of the code and you want to test them together. You just set parameters between each one of them and compare them and at the end so that they work together. That's the important thing. And then you have end-to-end -end testing. It's not that the tests work with each other because you have done that already. You made integration testing. It's more about the flow for the user. It's more about the the whole process is more like the behavior of the user, for example. If they want to buy a ticket as we want to do, we have to, you have to test the whole process from the beginning to the end, from the end to the end. And that's normally where, where things get a little bit messy. So properties that we can find, and even more in uh, centralized applications, and we'll talk about them a little more later, is that they take some time because it's not, it's not just the component, the code that you have to test. You have to test the net, some, well, the network, the connection between the components. Uh, if it's with blocks, the, the thing that you want to test, you might have to make a transaction. Normally, you, you will that you will do that in in local, in Ganache or whatever. But if you want to test it more like in a testnet, for example, in RainKB, it will take some time. I don't recommend that. I would recommend to do it on local host, but whatever. Uh, you cannot be point the root cause of failure because when you do end to end, you are testing like functions specifically. But when you when you sorry when you uh, test unit like unit testing, you you test the functions and specific features of the code. But when you do end to end uh, testing, you don't test specifically the code, you test the behavior of the user in your app. So you don't really know where the, the failure can come. For example, you can have 
problems in the database, even though that you're testing the HTML. You can have problems in the server, you can have problems, of course, in HTML, CSS. There are many things that can fail and probably will. So you cannot know exactly where's the failure, even though you can get close. And you as the developer probably know more or less where the thing goes, but you don't really know exactly where that thing is. One of the good things, as we said, is that it's closer to the user behavior. So when you test something like a function or a specific part of the code, you don't really test what the user is going to do. And that's a problem because you're not close to them. You're not really using the app as they are going to use it. And that's one of the, and that's for me the key point of interest in testing. One of the other things is that they are fake. And normally it sounds like they shouldn't. Like I've seen many people talking about them. Well, they are a bit fake. And if you go to the talks they do about puppeteer, and we'll talk about that later, in, in the Google developer uh, talks, they also say that. Like, it's a bit flaky. Many things can fail. The wheel, it's slow. Uh, there are some tricks, and we'll talk about them, but yeah, sometimes if you don't program, if you don't do the programming like quite specific to the things that you want, it, they can fail. So, yeah, they have some bad parts, but they have many good things. Uh, as a recommendation, probably most of you know about this, but this is a rule, 70, 20, 10, and it's basically that you probably should do 70% of unit testing, 20% of uh, integration testing, and then 10% for the end to end. Uh, that should be like, this rule, applies as well to the centralized applications. There is no, well, probably even more, since you are, well, depends on your product, but if you are doing the protocol, you need a lot of unit testing. And also, if you have a, a, a normal application, but, so, so I recommend following this rule. So, this is the beginning, Puppeteer. This is, Puppeteer is an old uh, library, that grabs the API of Chrome and allows you to control Chrome in a programmatically way. And it's super cool. It's developed by the Google Chrome team, well, Chromium, actually. And like, recently, like two months, three months ago or something like that, they released a beta for controlling also Firefox. We're not going to get into Firefox today because since we want to control the, the, the decentralized applications, we need a specific uh, extensions like MetaMask, and therefore it will be a little bit more complicated. You can you can definitely explore the the plugin in Firefox as well and control it, but you know what we're going to do. So first we have the the app that we're going to control today. And this is the second demo. It's going, it's going to be super simple at the beginning. We just declare Puppeteer, we want to get it, launch uh, a browser, open a new page, and then just go to the page that we served with, uh, well, it's written in view, but it doesn't matter. Then we wait for the happy message, which is a message that we wrote in HTML. We get the context, text, and we console it. Super simple. I'm going, to do, I'm going to be doing the demos while I'm talking. I think it's the best way to, to do that. It's quite easy, quite easy. We can see here, this is the title that we're, we were looking for, and the code was super simple. And actually saw in all the code that is needed in this slide. Right? You don't need anything else. And as you saw, I wrote it literally with no, no NPM or anything like that, just to say, just to show that it's quite simple code. It's not super complicated to start with at least. Well, it's not, it's not complicated at all. So yeah. Uh, just to give you a little bit more of syntax in the beginning, so we are in the same uh, position. Dollar evil allows you to get a 
a query selector of HTML, so you just get an ID of uh, HTML tag, or you can also get a name or a flash or whatever you need, and then you can do something with that. If you have an array of those IDs, you have to do the same, but with two different and you will get an array of them, and you can modify them, modify them, or do whatever you need. Because inside of this function, and you will see later, you can you have to pass uh, the query selector you want, and then a function, which will do the thing that you want. Um, as I say, as I said before. They are sometimes a bit flaky, so for example, the, the browsers don't, are not that fast as normal code. They, have, they need some time to make the request and process the, the data. So there are some things that you have to do in order to wait for those things to happen. The first of all would, would be wait for, and then the second, the new seconds that you want. I don't recommend using this much because <laughs> The, the browsers sometimes are slower than others, and some requests take some time, some others take less time. Uh, also depends on the resources that you have on your computer, so I don't recommend using a fixed time at all. Um, then you have wait for selector, this is the one I recommend, because it will wait some time that you can define by jest or whatever, to wait for a, a specific idea of it. You know. This is the one that you recommend to use. And you can also wait for a request, right? And once the request to pay is done, you can continue the testing or the scrap, you know, whatever you're doing with Puppeteer. <coughs> because Puppeteer is not, is not testing. Puppeteer, as I said before, is a null library that allows you to open a browser and control it with the APIs, with JavaScript. So, if you want to test, then you have to come back to the basics. Uh, if you don't know, this is just. It's, normal, it's, with the, it's the normal library that you use to test with JavaScript, but you can use Mocha or, or Cucumber for Python, but there are some others. You can use any testing library or unit testing library that you want. It will work, it will work nicely with Puppeteer, and they are constantly trying to make those things work. So. You won't, you, won't have, you won't find a problem there. So, here's another demo. What we're going to do here is to just integrate what we did before with Jest. Yes. What we did before was just getting the missions that, we, that it was in the title and match it with, and what we will match it with one more we know is the one that we expect. As I said before, uh, all the demos, well, probably. <coughs> all the demos are on the GitHub repo, and you just have to go to the branch that you need. In this case, is the demo three. So as you can see here, we are not, well, we pass the test, we get the missions, it's fine. But as you saw here, we are not showing the, the browser, we are not opening anything. That's what we're going to fix in the, in the next demo. But as you saw, you don't really need the whole browser for this specifically. Once we get into the centralized applications, you will need to open the whole browser, and that has some complications. We'll get, we'll get into them later. Um, so some stuff that you need to know, that you might want to know about Puppeteer. I'm going to go be very fast about this, but you can ask me later. You can control the page speed, so unless this page loads in less than two seconds, don't commit this, or you can do testing about the page speed, which is super awesome. Or check the unused assets that you have in your page, for example, you are not using more than 50% of your CSS, you could test that. In one package, you can uh, type in forms, scrap text, get access to the console log, throw out the network so you can see if your page works in, in places where the internet is not really good. 
you can record some videos or whatever you need, generate screenshots, drag and drop, and test that the drag and drop works, which you cannot do otherwise. Visual uh, integration says page weight, so if, uh, if you're loading too much data or too much uh, CSS or JavaScript or whatever, you can test that as well. Download images. Uh, you can uh, intercept the request and change the data for all the, for all the all other inputs, so you can have always the same data, always the same page, and there's some stuff there. This is quite important because, well. So when some pages, when you want some pages to be like quite always the same and not move them because the client or whatever uses them, you can uh, make an image of the page, have a snapshot of the one that you want, which was the previous that you want you had, and compare the pixel, by, compare them pixel by, by pixel, and you can ensure there that the CSS is the same, that the page is the same. That's quite cool and some extreme, but it works. You can harvest some info about the, the CEO, SEO service workers, you can test them, but it's more complicated, but you can do that. Offline, uh, the JavaScript, heat memory usage, mobile rendering, and then use CSS. That's some of the cool stuff that you can do, but there are moments. And to see, to show you how simple it is to do that, you just have to start CSS coverage, you will start uh, checking all the data of CSS, and when you stop, it will give you here, that it will return you uh, an object with all the data that it gives you about the CSS coverage. For example, how much are you using and how much are you not using, and you can do whatever you need with that. Same with JavaScript. Uh, another cool thing that you can do is, if you are always doing the, those testings and you are doing a lot of them, you can intercept the request of analysis and stop. Uh, Getting the and stop messing with your analytics. It's at the end of the day, what you need to see if it's working or not. And you probably don't want to mess with it. So you can stop the request, and if it's not analytics, you can continue with the request. Uh, more stuff, but I'm going to be fast and convince If you want to test on mobile, easy uh, service workers. And context. This is very important if you want to get into this, but it won't work exactly with uh, the centralized applications because you won't be able you won't be able to access the plugins. But if you're not going to use uh, MetaMask, I I really recommend using the browser context. It's super fast. It's awesome. So this is another demo. I'm going to be super fast with this one. It's just what we saw before, it has some inputs, it just types, and you will see. Well, the first one I think you want? There it is. Okay, you don't see it because it's closed. The I want to put because I'm saying to puppeteer to do, to be headless, so you don't see it, but I'm going to change that in a moment. So here, I have you commented? It's just this line. When you say headless false, it will open the whole browser for you. This takes a little bit more time. So yeah, it just types, and that's it for this test. Now we'll go into more. So the the thing what we did that wasn't before is just by simply allowing it to type some email in the email box. But the rest is easy. It's the same that we did before. These are the type, the type of inputs that you have. Type, keyboard press, click, tap, type. I recommend using all the way selector for before doing that. So you are sure that the thing that you want to type into is there. There's one more thing. Metamask, as we said before, something that we all need. For this, right? uh, and for that, I recommend a lot. Well, there's, well, there are more ways, but I don't recommend them. It's just using the, the Central and 
uh, library for that. I will show it. <coughs> to install is super simple. <laughs> it can render when we are doing it. <coughs> so it's just basically a, a library that gets the Metamask code and injects it into a specific uh, path that Puppet is waiting for to get the, the, the plugins, the atoms. So to use it, and we will see an example now, it's super simple. You just npm install Puppet here, then you import the library, you open a new browser with it, well, you have to also import the topic here. And then we, you have to uh, open MetaMask or, yeah, kind of like install MetaMask, just like this. And you put the seed that you want, or create a new one, doesn't matter. You can then switch to the network that you want, for example, Rinkeby. Then you have the typical things like MetaMask approve, and it will approve the transaction. But you have the confirmed transaction, which is the same for React, whatever you need. And then. You can always, and you will say now, you can always go to the page of Puppeteer that, it will, that MetaMask opens, like the other page, and control it like if it was a normal page in a browser. So even if it's not in the API, you still can use it. It just will take a little bit more of time. So we are in the MetaMask demo. Hopefully this will it opens the Chromium. Oh, 
basically putting the MetaMask extension for Firefox in a specific directory that uh, Puppeteer Firefox is waiting for it. Is where he's looking for the code. Like, when you open the browser, there is a directory where the <coughs> plugins or add-ons are, and you, what you have to do is to get the code and put it there, and then tell it to load it and where it is. But then, yeah. Try it once more, last one. And one more thing, if you want to use this on uh, CI, like so you call CI or whatever. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it did the whole thing. <laughs> and the test passed. It said the transaction bot and everything, so yeah, it was only the internet. Um, what did I say? I was saying, uh, if you are testing it on, if you want to use it on a single CI, for example, what you have to do is to install the X uh, virtual frame memory 
Uh, the good thing is there are some Docker containers that, are, are, that have all the things that you need already. So you just tell CircleCI to use those. But you, since you need the whole Chrome to open, you need the, the X, which is basically the graphic environment. Okay. What you will do is a, a virtually virtual X to open, not really. So that's it. Any more questions? Yeah. What about Cypress? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Cypress. I mean, Cypress is fine for me. We had some problems in the beginning because it's it loads too many things. And it it loads many things. It, it opens too many things, like it does screenshots, videos, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Cypress, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about writing a wait like on every single line? <laughs> well, that's more like JavaScript stuff, and you can always do promise all. You can always uh, um, do the then, then, then. So it's getting easier. Yeah, 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 but that's more like JavaScript problem. But did you manage to, or, uh, to, to run uh, Dapetir or something similar with Cypress? Uh, I haven't actually tried because I'm happy with Dapetir. But what you have to do is to load the... Yeah, it's not possible with Cypress. Well, I mean, I tried and okay. I... It even, doesn't allow you to, to inject? Yeah, you cannot load custom extensions. and But you can somehow make it work, but then it's not stable in the long term. So. At the end, I, I think it doesn't work, but I was just curious, maybe you did yeah, something. Yeah, I haven't like actually tried, because in the beginning we were like thinking about Cypress, but when I saw that Puppet had all the things that I needed, it was like, easy. But if it doesn't allow you to open a specific directory to load the plugin, the MetaMask extension, I don't see how you can do it. What about stability from your experience, would you say, the solution is stable? Does it have any cases where you have unknown errors, for example? I haven't actually found any, but probably. So you would say it's a reliable solution in your CI client? Yeah, well, I mean... I'm just wondering, but... Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, <coughs> I think that it is, because even if the Dapeteer the API is not good enough for you, for your needs, you can always change the page. I mean, you have two pages. The Page where you are testing and the MetaMask page, which is not just the thing that pops up, you have you have also the page. You can always change the page from this one to the MetaMask one and do everything like, like fake clicking, and therefore you can do this that you need. Two trends in user auth are like using another mobile wallet through Wallet Connect to sign transactions or using contract accounts and then doing some things within the app. So what would either like what would the implications be for event test? Well it depends. I mean you will need MetaMask. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you are using Wallet Connect, whew, that will be complicated because you need to test in the phone. But probably you can what you can do there it's uh, I don't really recommend For yeah. Wallet Connect, you can probably open a new type of this test, Wallet Connect button, which is web Okay, I didn't know that. Cool. Well, then you can change the page and test there. If you don't have any of those things and you have the app. Okay. Yeah, like one, two, three. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Um, if you have the, app, the account inside of the app, then um, do you know if you can also intercept the uh, requests from the MetaMask extension? You can you can get all the requests, not from the one page. And, and oh, so it's pretty cool. So for instance, you could try to intercept that request that was blocking right now and preventing you from doing the demo, mm -hmm. just mocking that response. Yeah. And then hook it up to MetaMask. Yeah.